is that he's arresting me and he's towing my car. I'm asking you to leave, and if you won't leave, um, then you will be arrested. He's saying that the I asked for your ID. Yes. I'm sorry. Just I asked for your ID. I don't. That's not how it works. You're oh, very no, you already yourself. are violating the law. I'm not violating any law. You're, You're violating, violating the law. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This video right here was sent to me by one of my subscribers. It's another video where dumb cops make a huge mistake and arrest a lawyer. This time, a Ligon County Sheriff in Michigan arrests constitutional lawyer Kathy Henry. This happened on Tuesday, November the 3rd, 2020. If you've already seen this video, make sure you watch it long enough to hear all the updates and where the case is at right now from Kathy herself. And she gives her insights into the judicial system, which are spot on and extremely educational and helpful. Now on this day she was arrested, she was collecting signatures for a petition for her organization for a Michigan constitutional amendment outside of a polling place in Allegan County, Michigan. Now Kathy was in compliance with all the laws, which mainly say she has to be 100 feet away from the doorway of the polling booth. Well, obviously the county officials had a problem with her political movement and threatened her with arrest if she didn't leave saying she was violating an unlawful resolution which they created that says you can only park on the county property long enough to conduct your business and even though that resolution is unlawful kathy was conducting first amendment protected activities and that was her business the county just didn't like it anyways let's get to the video so y'all can see allegan county's despicable behavior for yourselves Make sure you get over to Catherine Henry's YouTube channel. I'll put her links in the description. You're definitely going to like it, and you're going to learn something. I'll see y'all later. Hey, uh, I have this deputy here who says that he's arresting me and he's towing my car. I'm asking you to leave, and if you won't leave, um, then you he, will be arrested. He's saying that the I asked for your ID. The, yes. I'm sorry. Just I asked for your ID. I, I don't. That's not how it works. You're oh, very no, You already yourself. are violating the law. I'm not violating any law. You're, you're violating the law. You're, I asked you're not even. Your, I asked sir, you for you your ID. Even, you you are not, not even following the resolution from the county or from the township. Okay. The one that you guys gave us earlier, the one no, that you were reading from, did you no, read it? No it says you can't stop us. Right, you're you. not touching my car. Yeah, we're gonna. No, you're not. So are you willing to leave? Yes, it's yes. You have no right to do this. Are you willing to leave? You do realize it's abusive process and malicious yeah. prosecution. Yeah, okay. Yes, you're violating federal. Too. I don't care. You're so, on the hook, so no not preference, here. No preference, no preference. You have no right okay. to do this to me. Rod? Hey guys, I have deputy... Sheriff's Deputy Langloy from the Allegan County Sheriff's um, Department saying he's going to arrest me and he's going to tow my car because we are here. Let me see if I can switch this camera around. And I've shook this guy's hand before too. Um, there we go. All right, guys. So he's here trying to arrest me. This is our setup. Uh, so we are nowhere near the 100 foot mark, which is um the drain in the road uh right between where that silver truck and that car are pulling out that's the 100 foot mark where you can't you can't be past it in the other direction because those doors right there are the uh, uh doors to get into the precinct and the law clearly says we we can't be within a hundred feet uh we also can't be impeding anybody from getting in so they are, uh, he said going to arrest me if we don't leave right now because uh, the township owns this property and the township said that we have to leave. Funny thing is the township has a resolution that specifically says we have the right to be here. Now y'all just heard her talking about the law states that you can't be impeding traffic in any way. Well look who's the only one that's impeding traffic right here. He's got the entrance slash exit block. Doesn't want to read the law. Um, or the constitutional provisions that allow us to be here. So, um, we vote. absolutely. Yep. He says that the prosecutor gave him permission to come and arrest me, and that's all he needs to know. Oh, and the clerk's coming out to tell me I'm not allowed to be here on public property. We all pay taxes. This is our building. This is the pe this is the people's building. Yep. It's a township hall. It's a library. Yeah, so we got at least three. My husband was Allegan County Sheriff. He's like, he's like you're within your rights. Long yep. Off, yep. Long as you're within oh, the 100 feet is way over there. Um, uh, I don't know the address right off the top of my head. Okay. 
so you're aware, I know you, you two have already like met, so this is Mary Lou, she, this is, she's a township, township supervisor. I know. Okay? So she already spoke with you. I know, earlier today. Okay. And then I went back and so we kind of came up she with... She has it. something to say. Okay. okay. Um, I explained to you that we have this resolution that says we not allow... No, it says you do. It says you do. I, I, I'm just asking you guys to read it. Nothing in this resolution shall be construed to interfere with MCL 168.931K, which allows, guys, it allows a person to disseminate campaign literature on election day when a person is beyond 100 feet not, from an entrance. We're not contesting MCL 168. No. It's saying we have a right. It says this resolution says we have a right to be here. We're allowed to be here as long as we're beyond the 100 feet. That's what it says. That part has nothing to do with this part. What are you, what part? You may not leave a vehicle on township property beyond the time necessary to transact township business. But it says right here that nothing in this that is meant to. But that does not say anything about. Okay leaving a vehicle on township property beyond township business hours. So you were asked to leave. Okay, do you understand that? So you were asked to leave. Are you willing to leave? Yes or no? Y'all saw how fast these sheriff's deputies shut the lawyer down that was explaining the law to them? These cops don't care about the law. They're just following orders. Somebody points at a person and they attack, lock them in a cage. So all of you, um, let's see, this is Deputy... Bustle, am I Bustle saying that correct? And Anderson. Yep. Deputy Langloy. Anderson. Anderson. Yep. Deputy Bustle, Deputy Anderson, and Deputy Deputy Langloy are telling me that they're going to arrest me. Can I hold on? Hold on a second. I know you just came, and I'm I am I'm trying to be calm, but as you can tell, I'm a little. Just give me, just sir. I'm just let me finish the sentence. Can I can I ask you? five minutes can i ask you for five minutes to talk about what the no, law they, actually they, says you've already talked to the supervisor they've asked you she leave. has no right to stop but me from being you, here are you willing to leave yes or no you have no right to you're we violating a, the law okay we have a right to ask you. can you no you don't the prosecutor's on is on board with the trespassing oh, i don't care what the prosecutor okay. says you can't are trespass you willing to leave i'm asking if you're willing to look at the law are you willing to leave Possibly if you look at the law. Okay. This has nothing to do with what she's requesting you. Yeah, but the, she can't override the law. Are you willing to leave? This is Mary Lou, I can't read her last name, clerk of Layton Township. So also someone who's violating our rights. Yep. Go ahead and turn around. No, are you willing to Stop, 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 get off of me. Get off of me, my child is in the car, stop. This is absolutely unnecessary. Stop. Please, I'm asking you. I will leave right now. My child is in the... I, I will leave right now. Can you just let me vote? I want to vote and then you can rush. you vote at this precinct? No. Okay. So you don't have that I do, right there. My child is here. Okay, are you too willing to leave? No, you do not. I'm not I just voted. Out. That's all I did, no. and I signed a petition, so. Just okay. a I'm just a bystander, sir. Please, please, please my child is in the car. I want the Are you willing to leave? Please, I have a right to leave. I am going to, and I'm going to. You are not Thank acting you. according to the Constitution. I need your keys for your I know, car. I can't get them. They won't let me give you my keys. So Catherine Henry was interviewed by a great journalist named Allison Morrow. I'm going to play it right now. You guys, please pay attention because she explains the whole process, everything that happened, and where she's at to this day, all the litigations, everything, and this great interview coming up right now. Okay, so did did you end up going to jail, or did that did it all end where we saw it in the video? And then what ends up? I heard your charges were dropped after all that. So can you? bring us up to speed on where things stand right now? Yeah, so that day, um, they apparently were telling the public that was calling the Allegan County Sheriff's Office that I wasn't charged, I wasn't arrested. I was arrested, but I wasn't booked at the jail. Um, so I was let to go, you know, take my daughter home and I was able to go vote uh, myself. 
Uh, and then of course the, the very next morning get medical care for my injuries. Um, but, uh, they, the, the deputy, uh, he, he wrote up the ticket essentially initially as a civil infraction, but there is no civil infraction for trespassing. So, um, he modified it illegally, uh, before filing it with the court and he changed it to a criminal misdemeanor. Um, then uh, the way that it was done, and I was never served with the modified ticket or anything like that. So I was never served with a misdemeanor. Um, they violated my rights left and right. The court wouldn't give me uh, a date on a motion to dismiss um, until you know two months in. And um, I tried to bring up some of the important issues at the arraignment in January. Um, they kept the public out of all the hearings literally did not let any public in, did not let my husband in. They denied me assistance of counsel outright. I had an attorney in the courtroom with me in February, on February 4th, 2021. And the judge ordered him to leave the courtroom. Uh, Why? Uh, because he, he said he didn't want any witnesses. And I'm like, uh, what? what are you gonna do to me? Why do you want no one in here? Um, the judge was live streaming and he claimed that was the public access, but literally you weren't allowed to record the live streams. Uh, he, he denied any media from coming in. Wait, why would he say you can't have a witness if he's live streaming? Well, he, they, he immediately deleted every single hearing immediately at, as soon as it was done. So they live streamed it, made it publicly accessible, but then immediately deleted it. And did not let anybody into the courtroom. Now, here's the so thing. Who was in there? You and the judge? And the prosecuting attorney and the bailiff. Yep. And wouldn't let you have an attorney. And he said because he didn't want you to have a witness. This seems very weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have the transcripts. Um, so on two occasions, they wouldn't even let my husband into the building. Literally did not let my husband. Uh, the first time in January for my arraignment, they didn't let Lori, who's my assistant, um, or my husband, or anyone that they knew was a supporter of me. Some people had like shown up with us and were at the door. They wouldn't let any of them into the building and almost denied me. They were trying to deny me access. I mean, I've covered some weird stuff. When I was in TV news, I always thought it was odd that I had to basically, I mean, I guess one would say on better days, ask for permission, but on other days, beg for permission to be a reporter in a courtroom to show people what was going on. I always thought that was odd. Like why, why do I have to call ahead and get the judge's permission? Why? I mean, I, I know it's I've not heard constitutional. It's literally not constitutional. The U S Supreme court has long said that's well, not in federal courts worse. They won't let you, they won't let you bring a camera at all in federal court. You have to, you, that's why you get all the sketch pad stuff in, in federal court. I mean, I always just thought that was very odd. And I always, I also thought it was very odd just all the theatrics in courtrooms, like how, how everybody has to, it's, it, it feels like you're in a monarchy or something and, and everybody's just, anyway, but this is the weirdest stuff. I haven't heard ever anything like this. So this is very odd to me. There were many other things that they did. So I have a hearing disability. Um, when people wear masks, I, I, I read lips as my main form of communication. And uh, even with, you know, switching to these online hearings or implementing all kinds of COVID policies, even in the midst of that, the Supreme Court of Michigan clearly repeated to the trial courts like, hey, you have to, you know, if somebody has a disability and they need to be physically present, um, if they have a hearing disability, if they need to be able to read lips, all those things, they literally said, you have to look at that person's individual disability and make a proper assessment so that you're not violating their rights. If somebody doesn't even have a disability, but they don't want to do a Zoom hearing and they want to be present in person, you have to allow them to be present in person. Those are inherent rights that we have. Um, you have the right to see your accuser face to face. You have the right to see the jury face to face. You have the right to see the prosecutor and, um, you know, the other party, if there is one, um, you know, this case is, you know, the state. So the deputies weren't in the courtroom at that time. Um, you have the right to see the judge face to face. You have the right to be physically present in the courtroom for all essential pieces, pretrial conferences or, you know, settlement conferences, motion hearings, jury selection, all of it. And they were denying me the right to be physically present. Um, they denied me my request for ADA accommodations after already approving it twice in two different hearings, denied me. So when I was physically present, they had masks on and they hid behind plexiglass 
And so sound was not traveling well and I couldn't read lips. It was, it was awful. Um, so there were, there are so many ways that they denied my rights. I actually um, filed an interlocutory um, appeal as the case was pending uh, in spring of 2021. And the circuit court judge doesn't know the law or the constitution uh, at all. Uh, or court rules. Uh, I appealed it to the Michigan Court of Appeals. And in a one sentence denial, they just said, well, we're not convinced we have to get involved right away. And I'm like, I just gave you literally 75 reasons why uh, case precedent and court rules and the Constitution says you have to get involved. Um, I, um, I was devastated. I had two different appeals. They did the same thing in both. Um, and so um, you know, the, then the trial court kept moving my trial date. We have a right to a speedy trial. Uh, trial, the court moved my hearing. I had eight different trial dates and they never had a hearing on the adjournment. So I didn't, I never got notice and opportunity to be heard that I was going to be denied my right to a speedy trial. Every single time it was just done, like the judge just did it and just sent a notice to appear with a new date. Hmm. Um, okay. That's not constitutional. So, um, in May, I filed a whole bunch of motions and um, the judge uh, wouldn't allow those to be heard on the date that they were properly set notice to be heard, moved my trial date yet again and set the date for my motions. And then the prosecutor filed their own motions uh, to be heard on July 7th, which just happens to be my husband's birthday. Um, I think he actually started to read some of my motions, though, because one of the things I filed a motion on was that I had the right to have open hearings and be physically present and have people in the courtroom. And uh, so he actually did finally allow me and other people to be in the courtroom. It was the first time my husband had been allowed in the courtroom. Wow. First time any of them had been allowed in the courtroom. So, um, so anyway. how did this all end? How does it end? They just call you one day or send you a letter and they're like, you're off, forget it. Oh no, <laughs> the prosecutor's life. office was arguing hardcore. They were trying to say I wasn't allowed to subpoena um, two key witnesses. Um, they were trying to uh, say that I was not allowed to present any defense. Um, they, it, it was insane. Um, so they were fighting tooth and nail up to that you know, last moment. Uh, the judge finally agreed uh, that they had no legal basis to remove me from the property that day. And so he dismissed both charges. Um, I'm in the process now of, of, you know, getting the rest of the records. Um, I have to get my, the whole time they're violating my rights um, and doing this, stretching this out. They kept putting my personal protected information on documents, which is against the court rules. Uh, so I've had to make motions multiple times to have my information redacted. So now I have to fill out a bunch of forms, uh, to get my personal driver's license number and other identifying information redacted. Um, so I, I'm, I'm in that stage right now, but, um, they do this all the time. What do you think about, about how it seems like from my perspective, listening to people like yourself, that the burden is on the citizen to prove the government is acting unconstitutionally or illegally, which many people do not have the resources to do. Um, what do you think about that system? Because I, I, I talk to people like you all the time and I just sit back and think, how, how many times is this happening where nobody is fighting back because they can't? Why is the burden on the citizen to catch the government in illegal behavior. Why, why isn't there somebody else that's catching them? You know what I mean? Like, why don't they have somebody in the government that's like, guys, this is illegal. We can't do this. Or are they supposed to? And they just all are cohorting together. And so nobody cares. I mean, why is, well, what do you think about that system where it's up to you to go through the process you went through to prove that they're acting illegally? And, and how, how do you have, how do, how do you have a free populace when when the, when then there's that kind of burden on the average person? We don't. They have completely uh, dissipated any sort of notion of freedom that we really have. Uh, we have to fight to get it back. We have to fight to be able to exercise our God-given liberties, our constitutionally protected rights. And um, the thing is, the system itself uh is not broken the system itself is actually set up right now in a way that um can hold these officials accountable 
For example, um, 42 USC section um, uh, 241, I believe. Um, a lot of people quote the other one. I think the other one is 242, but um, a lot of people quote the one where they're, you know, just denying your rights outright. But that's related to, to race and, and other protected classes. Um, but in the other section, um, and I said the wrong one, it's 18 USC section 241. In 18 USC section 241, uh, it's actually a crime, it's a federal offense to conspire to deny someone of their rights, period. And depending on the situation, uh, it, such as if somebody is, um, you know, if somebody, if somebody dies because of your um, conspiracy to deny their rights, you can actually receive the death penalty. Um, but there's significant uh, prison time, you know, available when uh, when you have government officials that are denying rights. So, um, and it doesn't have to be just government officials, but it definitely includes government officials. So there are things out there. It's just that the government agencies responsible for protecting our rights seem to view um, the concept of law enforcement as the way to uh, keep us all within our own little boxes, that government's allowed to do what it wants until, as you said, the citizens prove otherwise. And the citizens are not allowed to do anything that they want unless they prove that the government has given them explicit permission to do so. Uh, we have to retrain ourselves. We have to take our governments back at the local level, at the county level, at the state level, at the federal level. Every level is important in every state, in every community, at local school boards, um, statewide school boards, the National Department of Education, all of it. We have to take our government back and hold those people accountable. And it's going to take many people being willing to stand up, spread the truth, uh, to read things like the Constitution for themselves, and to recognize that there are going to be, you know, penalties, if you will, or, or consequences uh, for their courageous actions in doing so. Like, you know, me being physically arrested and, uh, you know, emotionally traumatized and everything else going through 20, over 20 months of uh, litigation just to get out of the criminal charges. And then I'm going to have to start civil civil lawsuit against all of these clowns. I mean, it's the only way to try to hold them accountable at this point until we've done enough of the groundwork that we have enough people in those authoritative law enforcement positions that they're going to start making the arrests that the mm -hmm. prosecuting attorneys attorney general's offices that they're going to start prosecuting these offenses uh we can do it with the system we have we just have to realize that the people can't be lazy about it anymore mm -hmm.